this show, we have often talked about trade tensions between the U.S. and China. But rarely, if ever, do we get an insight, a factory floor level insight, into how it really plays out. Last week, Isa and I spoke to the filmmakers behind American Factory. This is an Oscar-nominated documentary. It gained remarkable access into a Chinese-owned glass company setting up shop in a defunct plant in Ohio. The result? Cultural clashes, unlikely friendships, and this rare look at the Chinese billionaire at the center of the whole thing. Every time when I visit, I see great progress. Joining us are Steve Bognar and Julia Reichert. They are the directors of American Factory. It mm -hmm. has received an Oscar nomination for Best Documentary Feature. Uh, and full disclosure, I'm not going to be uh, <laughs> totally objective about this because I loved the film. Absolutely loved what you did, Aww. both of you. Thank um, you. So we'll talk about that, but I suppose the first question both Isa and myself had was how did you yeah. get that access? Well, in the end, it was up to the chairman, the chairman Zhao, who owns the factory. He's a, he's a private entrepreneur in China. He's a billionaire, a multi-billionaire. And uh, he had seen our earlier film, The Last Truck, and he had been approached by some of the business community of Dayton about, there are these filmmakers here. Wouldn't it be historic if uh, we could make a film a, a, a positive film instead of a very sad film about the factory closing. So, you know, we told him there are three conditions. We have to get full access. You have no say over the editing, and we will take no money from you, Chairman Zhao. And I think that surprised him. But he said mm -hmm. yes. He said yes, <laughs> and we were off and running. The Chinese a layer of management within the factory that is brought in actually uh, essentially gives lectures to the, the, the yeah. new Chinese workers in the factory on Americans and American culture. Let's listen to that. overconfidence. <laughs> 就这个社会呢, Did they realize or care or consider <laughs> that this could be considered insulting for Americans and for this to be filmed and visible to the outside world? Uh, we don't know that that was a big factor. I was the only person in the room filming that. I don't speak Mandarin Chinese. And we didn't actually get that scene translated for maybe almost a year. Almost a year later. We so filmed didn't know what you had. so much material. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, of course, we were surprised when we got the translation back. We were shocked, honestly, that he said that. And when the workers in the plant, of course, when they saw the film in Dayton and when it came out on Netflix, uh, they were upset about that. I want to show our viewers another clip, and this is uh, the beautiful interactions, the intimacy that you were both uh, talking about earlier. Let's play this little clip of an American work and the friendship uh, that they, they mm -hmm. he builds with several of the Chinese workers. Take a look. I got the big idea Thanksgiving to invite my close friends, which should have been about four or five of them. It ended up being, I think, 13. Bought a 25-pound turkey, the biggest honey-baked ham I could get, and all of the traditional trimmings. I know that in China they're not allowed to have guns. We have my 12-gauge shotgun out there, pistols. How hard or how easy was it to, to bridge the, the culture-language divide? Were you surprised by this, this, these relationships? I'm a blue-collar kid myself, and I've, I found that in the factory, you know, blue-collar folks, Chinese and American, were curious about each other. They understood factory humor. People like to relate, workers. The management, as you just saw in the last scene, I think used a kind of nationalism to yeah. rally their workers. And, you know, we have that in our country, too. How many times have we been told mm -hmm. we're the greatest country in the world? Yeah. You know, and the Chinese do the same thing. The question well, I wanted to ask you, though, no. is you had the Obamas behind this, right? Barack and Michelle Obama gave you the backing for this film. Why did they mm -hmm. get behind this, and what was their involvement? 
Well, the Obamas uh, and their production company, Higher Ground Productions, came on board once the film was finished. We were very oh. lucky to get to premiere the film at the Sundance Film Festival. And we had made the film with participant media, the folks who made Roma and Spotlight, a lot of great mm -hmm. movies. RGB. We took the film with participant to Sundance, and that's where we teamed up with Netflix and Higher Ground. And we're really honored that Higher Ground, the President and Mrs. Obama's company, chose American Factory, our, our movie, to be their first release. That's very, very meaningful for us. Why do you think they, they, they backed you, they supported you in the movie? Well, you know, it's about... What was it about the movie? It's about working-class stories, blue-collar stories. How often do you see stories in the movies of working people yeah. and the concerns and the dreams and the fears and the hopes of working people? Julia, right. Stephen, thank you so thank much you for coming much on Thank you very much to you both. And good luck thank at the you. Oscars. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. you. Watch the film.